Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama. I am today's host for another great, great viewing program on business in Hawaii, where we really highlight the uh, how business and society, government, academia all interact. And in the, today's show, we have a theme of developing young professionals. And we are going to really uh, delve into how one organization in Hawaii and throughout the US is, has a program to create a pathway for future careers, especially in IT and um, all kinds of cybersecurity and in areas of computer science. And that company is called Booz Allen Hamilton. And today we have on my left, my extreme left is Sean Fox, is an associate with Booz Allen Hamilton and the coach of this interesting internment pro uh, internship program that we'll be uh, describing more in the f uh, later in the show. And to his uh, right, we have Jocelyn Louie, who's a student at Hawaii Pacific University. And to my left, Carrie Noe, a student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And so the first question is, Sean, what is Booz uh, uh, Allen Hamilton, and how is it kind of related, connected to this program, internship program? Sure, uh, Booz Allen Hamilton is a management consulting company. Uh, been in business for over 100 years. So in fact, depending on who you ask, we actually, Edwin Booz, the founder of the company, coined the term management consulting. Oh, great. Don't yeah. look in Wikipedia, it says something else. So I you know, <laughs> heard the story, I don't know where the truth is. But he was a pioneer in that he was a pioneer uh, uh, thing. He was uh, a, very early field of management consulting. Exactly. And uh, we have actually 25,000 employees around the world, uh, do a lot of business supporting our Department of Defense and government contract, uh, government co customers. Um, we came to uh, Hawaii, our first, um, project here in Hawaii was actually in the 60s. Right, right. Opened up our office here in, on uh, Bishop Street in 1996. And today we have about 400 people in the Pacific Rim, 300 of whom are based here in Honolulu. Oh, terrific, and, and uh, tell me about uh, your own work. What areas uh, do you uh, work in? Um, I, at, at, at the, at the, at the company. Yeah, that's that's always a good question. Yeah. Um, I, I do a lot of small projects, depending on where the need uh, to fill is. Plus, um, as we'll talk about, the summer games team, right. uh, university outreach, and a, a bunch of other outreach programs uh, that Booz Allen here in Honolulu and as a firm we'd like to focus on. Terrific. We'll go back to that. Yeah. And uh, next we have uh, Josh and uh, Louis, and why don't you tell us? about your background, where you're from, and, and uh, how you came to be today. Go ahead. <laughs> I'd love to. I was born and raised on the west side of the island, so born and raised in Kapolei. I graduated from there in 2014, and then I later went to Hawaii Pacific University for my BS in computer science, and now I'm studying to get my MBA. So I've always been drawn to puzzle solving, and oh. that's kind of been something that drove me towards computer science. Right. And I actually, my latest puzzle, I just learned how to pick locks. So that's, I know, that's exciting. A physical, that's a physical kind, it of, is. Uh, uh, it kind is. of delving into a mystery, right, which is it, the lock itself. It uh, is. But when you say about puzzles, is it puzzles of uh, crossword puzzles or puzzles putting together puzzles? What kind of puzzles are they? Well, for me, I personally enjoy being able to put things together. Oh. So it's very much the physical puzzles. Oh. I do also enjoy Sudoku. Oh. That's right. been fun Which for me. Which is about numbers. Yeah, right. 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 And so I think I was in elementary school when I started getting into that. Only the easy ones, of course, but started to work my way that's up. Right. <laughs> what a brain. Well, that's, that's terrific. Your brain puzzles and using uh, exercise your brain. Now, carry Noe. So you're, you're uh, from Hawaii, but I heard that you're from a neighbor island. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was born and raised on Kauai. I graduated from Kauai High School. Uh, I came to UH Manoa to study. I just graduated with two degrees, one in computer science and the other in animation. And this fall, I'm going to start my graduate degree where I'm gonna, I have an RA ship with the Laboratory for Advanced Visualization Applications. We call it LAVA. That's terrific. And, and um, uh, which computer language do you like best? 
That's a hard question. Yeah. Like, because most computer, um, most coding languages, you use them depending on what you want right, to do. Right. So I do like C Sharp because I tend to uh, code using Unity and I code using. Uh, to make games or virtual oh, reality oh, projects. Right, 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 so yeah. that's typically what I'm That's a, that's a new one on me. <laughs> in my, my world, C++ or C or Java yeah. were the heavy uh, areas. Definitely okay. had to learn that too. That's right, there. that's right. Yeah, <laughs> It's kind of funny because uh, uh, I had a friend who didn't know much about computer science, but he, later he became a whiz, that uh, when uh, presented with a C and C++, he, uh, the person thought that C would be easier than C++ because uh, well, C++ <laughs> seem to be later in the variations. But unluckily, uh, luckily for him, he dived into C and realized it was like machine language. But and, it, it got easier <laughs> from there. Yeah, so it got, everything was easy after C. But we we're, we're, uh, just a story for you that only CS students could understand. Uh, so back to uh, Sean. Uh, when did this, uh, what was the trigger for uh, uh, really developing internship program? And, and how did it all begin? Well, in actuality, the summer games program is what we call it, Booz Allen Hamilton, is um, in our 11th year. Uh, we came, the first program, first time we had a team, and it was in Honolulu, was in three years, was three years ago. So really about 11 years ago, Booz Allen realized that we wanted to find great college students, put them through an internship program, and prep them for coming to work for us. So and how do you find them? Do you uh, communicate with the faculty and say, let me know if you have some bright people coming through or people who kind of can fit into our culture? How, did that, uh, 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 how does it work? Well, um, it, the good news is in a prior a job before I joined Booz Allen, I was tightly connected with the Department of Engineering at, at University of Hawaii. So when we decided to do this, I reached out to all the former contacts. Having said that, we've expanded to Scheidler, we've expanded the College of Computer Science, uh, even some of the other, you know, human, uh, natural, other science language, other science programs. Um, but we've basically, through hard work of reaching out to different uh, people we know, alums, reaching out to former professors, have built a network of professors that, uh, when we, when it's time for us to start recruiting for the summer games, and, and at HPU as well, I, I forget. Uh, one of the people that I met at some event found out about it and reached out to you right, at right, HPU. Right, yeah. So it was really through gra grassroots of you know alumni and and people today we're still in contact with alumni that were very involved in the um, in the university. So how many ha have gone through the program in locally in Hawaii yeah. with the, with the organization? Yeah. So first year we had eight students. Right. Last year we had twelve, and this year we have ten. So oh. a total of thirty students have gone through wow. our program. And really the objective of the summer games is you know to. You know, we've, for this year especially, we're focusing on you know, AR, VR development or right, software development, right. uh, data science, or cyber. Because we also know that it's impossible to hire every, enough people to fill those three right. roles within our client's yeah. base. So we're, we're growing these, what we call them purple unicorns. Um, the interview process is actually pretty hard in Hawaii. We're a little bit different. Um, as a program that I started three years ago, is we actually have them come and do like a five minute pitch on something they're passionate about, mm. like you would see on Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So we had about, this year, about 50 students go so through. So you're judging their communication to... skills, presentation skills, and knowledge about about the world. Exactly. Yeah. And so of the 40 students we interviewed, about 20 of them went through that program. The rest had applied through just our normal online. And we do a night of interviewing where they spend you know, like the first 45 minutes interviewing with four people. And the other half are doing a workshop on how, taking our idea and seeing what they would come up with. And then we switch. Mm. Then at the end of the night, the staff gets together and we kind of do a one through 20 and pick the top you know, five or so. And uh, this year, actually, we got our top five. We did two nights, one for cyber, one for our AR, VR team. And we got our top five for both this year. So switching to Jocelyn, uh, how was your experience related to what you just said? <laughs> was, it, was it challenging or was it something that, based on your you know, uh, background, it was easy? I wouldn't go so far as to say it was easy, but I really enjoyed the process. I think that participating in the five-minute pitch in front of Booz Allen Hamilton staff, that was really helpful, and I think it kind of prepared me for interview night just because Sean was picking people at random, basically, during that presentation process. You had to think on your feet. Exactly, okay. you do. And so I actually, I used to compete in pageants. And right. so that really, I think, kind of helped get me mm. back into the groove as far as just thinking on your feet, being able to communicate with others and collaborate. I enjoyed the interview process just because 
a lot of the associates that we had interviewed with, they made us feel at ease. Oh, I, I have no doubt that they uh, saw the fear. Any question that was very <laughs> challenging or something that made you really think uh, deeply in order to really express what, uh, a response to that question? Any, any questions like that? I would say for me, probably the hardest question that I had to answer was, um, why did you pick Booz Allen Hamilton? And honestly, I had a list of reasons for why I wanted to apply. I did. <laughs> well, I thought about it for a while, actually. And so I kind of asked them, well, how much time do you have, basically, for this question? And I just wanted to really communicate that company culture, uh, investing in your employees, and then also the ability to show what I can bring to the table. Those were probably my top three. Well, terrific. I and Terry, uh, you went through the um, uh, introductory period. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, on, on using your background to really prepare yourself or kind of express yourself? Right. So I was really excited because uh, even in the uh, when we were coming up with different pitches to do for the first round and then getting to the interview night, a lot of the questions mm. were centered around virtual reality, mm. and that's what I am passionate about right, and specialize right. in. So I had a lot of fun because they constantly were asking me, "Oh, what's your idea about this virtual reality project?" And I'm like, "Okay, here's ten of them. Do you want to hear more about it?" Kind of thing. So I had a lot of fun in that, in which I was lucky that it kind of went into what I was interested in. Terrific. So it kind of uh, fortunately was up your alley, yes. <laughs> your pathway. Well, so. So we're going to take a break now and come back and we're going to go into more details about their current project and what they want to do in the future. This is Ray Tsuchiyama for Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Are you tired of sleepwalking through life? Are you dreaming of a healthier, wealthier, happier you? You're not alone. And that's why thousands of people tune in each week to watch R.B. Kelly on Out of the Comfort Zone, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Make a change, get the help you need, and stop sucking at life. Hey, Army, we're about to go live. Oh. Hello, it's 1 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, and I'm your host, R.B. Kelly. Welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. We're back, and the two students are making me feel very old <laughs> in terms of computer science and, and how it's really moved into new areas of society, uh, government, and, and uh, business. And the two areas that uh, Sean mentioned are really, really high up in, uh, in, in expertise that we really need for the future, which is in cyber uh, security uh, and also in developing new programs and engineering. Tell me more about uh, those two areas at, at Booz Allen Hamilton. Okay, so the, I mean, the, what we call the purple unicorns, if you will, um, cybersecurity. And it's, it's, it's a growing field and it, it just can't, uh, find enough experienced people to fill all the roles, and it's it's not just with Booz Allen. Every every uh, company and organization has having the same issue, and also you know data science and and, and programming. And data science and programming can be kind of very similar. Um, within Booz Allen, we have a project that we call uh, the Data Science 5K, which is we're going to train 5,000 employees to become data scientists over in uh, in five year time period. We're taking, looking for college students and taking our internal student people that want to focus on the on the um, cyber realm and giving them the experience and the exposure to um, actually grow the skills or grow our own people to do that, um, which I think is very unique about Booz Allen and companies today. Not a lot of companies invest in growing their people. Booz Allen really believes it. And then the third field that is just we're really, we keep on saying it's about to explode, but it's it's getting hotter and hotter is that AR VR. Right, right. And the reality is it's such a new field that there aren't. Um, there aren't uh, people that have the experience because there's just no, not no, that just, much uh, just happened you know, yeah. just at the beginning, right? And actually, as a firm, we have um, uh, 700 or 375 total interns across America uh, and about 20 different offices. Um, so far, there are five um, AR VR teams. 
So just within, so it's about 25 students that were having focus on this skill set with the goal of hiring them all. And that tells you how we see that industry growing if we, we feel we're going to need 25 new employees next May. So uh, coming to Jocelyn, uh, so during your um, uh, Purple Unicorn period <laughs> uh, in this uh, summer program, what did you work on or what are you working on? Well, the project that I'm working on, I'm part of the cybersecurity team, right. so we're helping build up the Hive. It's an open source case management tool that allows cyber staff to respond to different incidents. For example, if there's a breach within a company, right. a data breach, they can enter all of their information. It's good for storing indicators of compromise. And basically, we're trying to help build up the user experience and really kind of just add to their code base to help protect data for small businesses as well as large businesses. And since the project is open source, that means it's available for That's everyone right. to use. Right. right. Off the so shelf. exactly. It's kind of a paradox, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. Right. It is. But um what that means, see the source code, yeah, but, but right. we won't go into that. <laughs> but what that means is that the work we're doing now, we're actually making change for all future users. Oh, They'll okay. be able to benefit from yeah. what we're working okay. on right now. So you're making the code easier or more efficient or, or that kind of thing? So or? basically, yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to do right now is add in some different statistical analysis tools. We're trying to implement customized yeah. templating, yeah. case reporting, yeah. just because you have to do that yeah. throughout the life cycle of a case. We're also trying to allow for easier access to audit logs, which is extremely important as well. Well, those are really exciting areas, and, and we come to you, uh, Karen. And, and what are you working on, and, and does it have any relation to the AR, VR area that uh, you're so passionate about? It does. So uh, my team is Digital Solutions, and right now we're working with the Bishop Museum to create an augmented reality app so that the Bishop oh. Museum can distribute it and have it so that they can show some of the pieces of their collections and to teach about their collections that they may not be able to with their usual static exhibits right. that they have now. So basically, it's almost like an adventure game because yeah. we're uh, aiming it for a little bit of a younger audience. Mm. And you can go around the Bishop Museum and find certain markers. And when you find these right. markers, uh, you can uh, unlock certain experiences, games, and information so that you can learn about whatever the topic is. Well, that is a fantastic app because uh, you know there's so much richness uh, you know behind uh, certain artifacts and, and and treasures that they have at the Bishop Museum, but that kind of uh, like you say uh, it creates a pathway to know more about the background of certain uh, historical uh, you know uh, things that they objects and so forth that they have in display at the Bishop Museum. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic, kind of merging uh, the uh, most recent AR VR tool and with the history of Hawaii, with, uh, with, uh, with the kingdom. That, that's terrific. Um, so uh, back to you, uh, uh, um, Sean. When you look at the uh, hi um, background and history of the project and going forward, you know, going forward uh, in, in the future, any changes or you want to take this uh, as it is in the future or what are you, uh, any best practices come to mind in terms of developing young professionals? Well, that's that's a really good question, and I always say, if you're not learning, you're dying. So yeah, I think every year, and, and if we look at how this is our third year, um, and uh, my third year of coaching teams, and I look at how I was a coach the first year versus this year has right. even changed, yeah. and even the hiring process. Although we do the pitch nights and all that to bring people in, it, it's um, we've learned a lot about the process of how to you know nurture the students when they come in and really grow the skill set that'll make them better professionals uh, and I think that's Booz Allen way is you know when what we say when you hire from Booz Allen, uh, some from Booz Allen you don't hire the person you hire the firm there's a lot of support behind it and really teaching the and the people that we target is people that are part of that team mentality that, that are there to support each other and help each other so I think if there's anything gotten better at, at teaching that but also at even just finding the right Making sure we're finding the right people that fit into that the you know Booz Allen uh, model. Now, of course, uh, in the world today, competition for right. well-trained technology professors is global. It's it's all over the world right now. And uh, of course, in Hawaii, um, we have uh, graduates coming out uh, of uh, public schools, K to 12, into universities, and so forth. 
if you were uh, looking at the K-12 uh, uh, DOE and saying, we would like to see this so that you, there are people who are prepared for the future for roles and technology or engineering, cybersecurity, we would like to see more of this in your curriculum in K-12. What would that be? That's actually, uh, we are the title sponsor for FIRST Robotics of Hawaii. So we are, uh, as Booz Allen Hamilton is, and if you go to the championship, our name is up on the big board the whole day, time. So actually, Booz, and I don't know how many years we've been doing that, recognized that we needed to grow STEM uh, students, if you will, and the program we have invested from Lego Robotics all the way through high school, uh, with not only financially, but a lot of volunteer time from our staff, is FIRST Robotics. So to kind of answer your question, that was that's one of the things that we focused in on is, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, uh, and yeah. another bit, and I'm sorry, is, oh, go ahead. is also about FIRST Robotics. It's not just about building a great robotics, it's about working a team, being able to present the well-rounded scientist is a big part of that as well. And the second part is where I really would like to see more of, uh, because uh, you can have 20% of the tech and math and whatever, computer science, the 80% to me is the English, the presentation skills, yes. knowledge about the world, what is uh, the world about, <laughs> essentially, and, and how to present uh, to uh, an audience, and as when I was at Google, uh, collaboration, uh, teamwork. I mean, I, I would even put a higher priority on that than technical skills, because if you can't explain a project and get it forward, it, it just doesn't proceed. Uh, back to Jocelyn. Uh, so, um, if you had a person younger than you coming into the program, anything that you would tell them about what you should have prepared in order to really make a successful uh, contribution to the program? I would say come with an open mind. Be ready to learn different languages. For example, the project that I'm working on right now, the Hive, I'm working with HTML, right. JavaScript, right. there's the AngularJS framework on top of that, and then on the back end we have Scala. Oh, there's also some Bootstrap thrown in there. So I'm more familiar with Java, right, it's right. object-oriented web, web, programming. Web, web development, right, right, right. Right, and so we're learning, yeah. basically, as we go. Um, so it's end-to-end. -end. It to is. Learn all, more than just one part of it. It yeah, is. Right. It really is. And so I would say just come with an open mind. Don't be afraid to try new things. And wow. if maybe you don't get it the first day, or, yeah. it's fine. Come back, try again tomorrow, and really just be persistent and keep at it. Well, that's fun. That's a heavy dose of technical <laughs> skills right there. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Carrie, you're, you're interested in AR, VR. And, uh, and we were just talking before the show uh, about the short film that you developed. Tell me about that film, uh, Kai and Honua. Oh, yes. Uh, Kai and Honua is actually a 2D uh, hand-drawn animated film that I created. Uh, it's because I did a degree in animation. It oh, was yeah, my senior right. film. And it is about an uh, ocean spirit who is alone in the world. The world's covered in water. And an uh, earth spirit is born, and they kind of have to fight over the territory. But they see that uh, being together, new things such as different life forms come about. That's fantastic. Again, the application of uh, high technology to uh, you know ancient Hawaiian uh, stories and, and uh, mythology. This is fantastic. Uh, and and um, Carrie, uh, in the world of animation, what is your most favorite animated film or short? Oh, this is the hardest question. <laughs> oh. um, I really like Princess Mononoke. Oh, wow. Yeah. Japanese. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ghibli studio, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they make awesome movies, but Princess Mononoke is yeah. my particular favorite. Cause and, I really and why is it, is it a story? Uh, uh, is it about the characters? About what? Yeah, particularly the story, because yeah. a lot of it has to do with nature. Right. And because one of the main conflicts is that they're this human settlement, and mm -hmm. they're trying to develop, and they're you can kind of sympathize with their plight because mm -hmm. they're trying to make it for themselves, but at the same time you see the forced uh, perspective and that they can't find a way to peacefully live with each other, and so it kind of goes over those themes, so I think it's a very beautiful film, because so also it, just the yeah. animation is also beautiful. Yeah, and it also it's not just a children's story, it's, it's a more story about, about nature and, and, mm -hmm. and about uh, uh, human society and the conflict and so forth, so it's a much richer, what you're saying, it's a much richer story, yeah. plus you like the animation. <laughs> yeah. But that's a kind of, uh, I, I would say not a high-tech, well, it's, it's high-tech animation, but it has a style all its own. Uh, that's very different, but, but you're right, uh, that, that animation style 
is globally really uh, um, uh, you know uh, liked. Uh, so back to you, uh, uh, Sean. Um, in in terms of. Um, <laughs> So they, they, they both looked at me and like, no, I want them to talk, but anyway. All right, all right. <laughs> well, uh, if you had a question for them uh, uh, from, uh, from your perspective, uh, in, 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 they're in the middle of their programs, what would that be? Uh, that would be interesting. That's, a, that's, a go ahead. that's actually a tough one, right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, because the easy one is what's the hardest well, thing to I, I only right? ask the tough questions, yeah, but go ahead. No, so for, uh, we'll start with Jocelyn. What was, yeah. what was the, the biggest learn, biggest thing you've learned? Oh, my gosh. Mm. I would have to say right now, I, just all the different coding languages that we're working with, because like I said before, I'm more object oriented, so scripting, uh, web design, never taken a class in it before, didn't really have any exposure to it until now, but hey, I've been able to write HTML, get the JavaScript on the back of that to work. Um, I mean, I got excited the first time I was able to make a button work. When you click it, it hey, it did something. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that was within the first few days. Right. And honestly, I've enjoyed the challenge. Well, this, this, yeah. Now, you're in the MBA program also. What, 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 uh, what did you see as a linkage between your engineering or CS uh, studies mm -hmm. and, and business? Did you see a, a, a really subtle linkage or, or that uh, the engineering really helped you in areas or the business really gave you a new insight on engineering? What, what is that? I would have to say that I felt my computer science degree, it gave me the technical knowledge, but then that's only one piece of the puzzle. There's also the business aspect. Well, how would we market this? How can we sell this? Uh, basically, what is the value of this project? And so that's where I think the MBA really comes into play because it's helpful to have the technical knowledge, but I believe you said it before, uh, that's only one piece of the puzzle. If you don't know how to communicate and express, okay, this is the value of it, this is why we should care about this thing, then it's never going to come to fruition. That's, the well, it's not, that's not a uh, new uh, idea because right. uh, when I was at DAC in the, in the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, engineers always wanted to b create elegant code. Right. <laughs> and the uh, product managers wanted to make something that would sell. Uh, mm -hmm. what, would be, what would customers mm -hmm. like? What, what would they really enjoy and help them solve their problems uh, You know, in, in healthcare or mm -hmm. engineering or in, in educational fields? Uh, so we're coming to the end, but I want to go to uh, uh, you, Carrie, uh, anything that you want to... Uh, Actually, I got a better question. Yeah, go ahead. So go I got ahead. a question for, Car for yes. Kari. Um, you've worked on other projects through the Lava Lab with Dr. Lay and, and other project teams, yeah. but never as a quote-unquote real job. No, yeah. So how do you, would you compare project management in a you know, corporate setting, if you will, versus the school projects and even on the project teams you, you've been on? Because I know a couple you've been on, so... There's a lot more project management. A lot more project management. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we do Scrum. We do our um, for our project management. So we do sprints and that kind of thing. Usually, when you're in school, they don't really teach you that kind of project management skills. So you're kind of left with whatever works for your team. So learning project management skills, I think, was the biggest like really eye opener for me because I can see how some things that we had trouble in school doing it this way, we never even had that problem working in this project. When they would, would, would have, it would have made it easier. Okay, well, that's yeah, easier. a skill set we gave her, I guess. Oh, well, that's yeah. terrific because that <laughs> is a key to uh, work in industry, which is uh, it's all about project management, how okay. to begin it and how to end it. But there's all these things in, in between, mm -hmm. and working with other people with other goals and deadlines and dotted lines and so forth. And and uh, you're absolutely right. That is a key to a really. Um, uh, working efficiently in a team. Um, so we're at the end of our show, and I want to thank you all for being part of this really informative um, uh, program on uh, developing young professionals on business in Hawaii, and my name is Ray Tsuchiyama. Thank you very much.